You are listening to High Score 5 0, where sports and comedy get lifted. But baseball, that's a fun game. That's a fun game. And to be the umpire would actually be kind of fun because you have somebody who doesn't want to really drink or play, they could just be like the, the arbiter of the rules. And then Jared, Jared missed the camp season already. I didn't see that. He missed the camp season. about drinking games. Drinking games <laughs> reminiscing. No, no, no. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Guys. Yeah. You guys want to play some drinking games? Together? No, I'm fine just drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your boy Robinson. He got hurt then the last year. Is he hurt sure. again? Uh, <laughs> I hope he is because he don't deserve to be on that court. Aaron, you should hope he is because he don't deserve to be on that court. It's a great sport. It's, it's a lot of players. It's a lot of players on the court. If Melo doesn't throw if, passing the ball. So if okay. other shit players going to be on the court, then he needs to be on but the court. That ball. nigga better be the most gangster. He better have some uh, Iron Man technology in his shoe so he can fly around that court and block every shot. Which he can't do. You got uh, Steven Adams who's voted uh, toughest player in the NBA. Dude, you already said he's like, he's like, oh, that's 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 good. Do, do I win something for that? Does it does it does it, does it make something. me better? So we were talking last week about. I was talking yesterday, Aaron, and I brought it up to him, and he he didn't really think it was a good idea. And there's reasons why it's not a good idea. But like Dominic Foxworth, who who is who has been on the players' union bargaining side. Uh, work with the NBA players union on their bargaining side as an NBA like he has business yeah. background um, was saying that he thinks that the NFL at least maybe not the NBA because they have way more power should decertify their union because yada 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 and, and one of the main reasons he was saying is that all the interests of the union end up just playing into the actual interests of the teams and the owners and so he has he wrote an article he has a whole spiel on why he thinks decertifying the union would be better for all the players all around and so I was talking to Aaron about it. Aaron doesn't think it's a good idea. I think it has some some validity. And so I think we're going to talk about that next week and debate it. So you can think about what you think about that as a concept or an action. We can talk about the re- realistic aspects of it. That, like, could it really happen? And whether or not, you know, would happen if it were to ever happen that that, that did happen. So. I mean, everybody's contract was like Richard Sherman's. No, <laughs> like every play you, every play you're in, like you get more money. Yeah. Like that's what it, I think it'll eventually be. Like, oh, you get a sack, you get this amount of money. You it'll be incentive. There's yeah, there's whole, there's a whole other. I think there's a whole other realm. Of Players don't want incentivize contracts. Which yeah. is kind of stupid for doing that. Yeah, he I, didn't even play last week. Yeah. <laughs> and he got hurt. Yeah. Everybody looked like Ricky Williams and Master P in the negotiations. Like, yeah, lies. Like, remember, remember that change like twenty five hundred yards. <laughs> I get that. I get million dollars. And then remember how after that happened, nobody nobody took an incentivized contract because he got basically no money because he would have made more money signing as a fifth overall pick. Yeah, like if he would have just with the money that slotted then than him doing that incentivized contract. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll talk about that next week. Shout out to next week sponsorship. Uh, we'll get to that next week. Yeah, look forward to our show next week. We'll be debating whether or not the NFL uh, Players Union and the Collective Bargaining Agreement should be completely, what's the word, uh, revamped? I don't know, but you changed going around. No, no, we're not going into it. We're just giving a little uh, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Um, anyways. Foreshadowing and artists won't be here next week either. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I had, I had a theory about you, Brandon. What's up? By you, by you's always just like so good out in public. No, that's, oh yeah, that goes. That goes. Why <laughs> he's yeah. oh, yeah. so good, Brandon? So, so, so I get to watch the audio levels here. I get to listen to the audio doing the editing. And let me just say, Brandon, you know, we all know, you have a robust laugh. <laughs> you you can be soft spoken. You are typically soft. I don't say soft spoken, but you're you're not you're not you're not somebody who captures attention uh, with the way you speak and carry yourself. Other than the fact that you're a big Negro. Um, aside from that, you know, what I'm saying you you have a very robust laugh that captures people's attentions. And I was like, man, I have a theory here. Now I was kind of I was on one. Shout out to Cushy Punch sponsorship. Um, I was like, Aaron, man, I just had this concept. So why Brandon was always so good in uh, going out and meeting people and, uh, and, and and you know meeting the ladies here and there you know you know Brandon's, Brandon's a changed man though he's a reformed man you know he lived a good life that's why he was like that but anyways um, and I was like Brandon's laugh is so is, <coughs> is so is so big that like 
no matter where you are, like Aaron, I remember Aaron several times be like, man, I was looking for y'all in the bar and I heard Brandon laugh and I knew where y'all were, so I just walked over there. So your laugh is so powerful that it gets across planes of different uh, 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 lives and people all of a sudden turn and be like, what's he laughing about? And they see you with whoever you with laughing like that and they're like man those people must be funny because i ain't never heard somebody laugh that loud <laughs> in my life you know that i was on the first friday for a little bit again you know just trying to just trying to be out there before it gets too crowded with God. the stroller man that's just crazy what do you shout like? out to first friday sponsorship shout, yeah, shout out to uh, first friday shout out to uh, people who i used to go out the first friday with i ain't heard from you i ain't seen you for some reason you still call me to do this damn show <laughs> but when it comes to my social life, no one want to call me. When it comes time to do this damn show, every Sunday you want to text me in the middle of the day, no matter what I'm doing. Should we do a quick uh, fantasy update for our friend Nate? Shout out to Nate. Uh, he was asking us for uh, fantasy, fantasy advice. advice. <laughs> so he's like, "Do y'all do any like fantasy, like you know, pickums or, or uh, advice on your show?" And we were like, "Nah, not really." <laughs> but uh, we like, do that yeah, just any advice you give me, we're like, "Yeah, if you want to lose, I mean, <laughs> like, we're not really, we're not, we're not the smart show." Yeah. Yeah. You want me to go on a hunch or save our metrics? <laughs> well, well I mean, I, it would make sense for us to do it because our show comes out usually Wednesdays, and we can like break down the next week games. Good. That's true. And break down fantasy matchups. That would also really hinge on people just not getting hurt after we say it. <laughs> you know, just not. Still questionable, but uh, he's questionable on Sunday. We don't know what's going to happen by Wednesday and Thursday. Um, anyways, well, I guess we should get ready to start the show. Yeah, man. Seattle been hitting, man. It's the new Legion of Boom. Oh, they're playing physical. They're still going to play that physical football. All right. Uh, Yo, Cooper Cup is out, I think. Oh, shit? <laughs> yeah, dude. He got hit. He got taken to the ground hard by Ben Jarvis Mingo. Bar Ben Jarvis. Whatever the hell his name is. Ben no, no, no. That you can't do a magic. magic. No, you can't do a magic moment when a brother, when when somebody ignorant parents gonna name him Ben Jarvis or Ben Carvius or whatever the hell his name. Man, What's his real name? Excuse me, on his What's name right now. She said so many bad wrong variations of the nigga's name. What's his, his real name? name? I, it, no, I'll tell you what his name is. I remember what his name is. It is. Barkevious means Did you can't match moment off of a name that just <laughs> that's stupid. No, hold on, hold on. that doesn't sound. It's right. good thing I got the speaker, right? You know what I'm saying? Hold on, Aaron, you get this. This magic moment. You can't even do that, man. Not not when his first name is Ben Carvis Barcadius. It's a magic moment because you love magic. You love the Lakers, so you get a magic moment because you know how nah. you know this. Nah, so, nah. Sometimes when magic's talk ignorance because this AIDS is fucking with him. It don't fuck up his T cells. The man got more T cells than all of us combined, but fuck it up his speech impediment. <laughs> yeah. So if y'all ever hear this sound bite, this magic moment, or if you hear Kamal screaming out out loud, um, that that just lets you know that somebody, typically Aaron, has had a magic moment. It's a special drop for Aaron when he either says somebody's name egregiously wrong you, or being Carvis that cannot say that's egregious when the, the name is egregious. This the name is egregious to begin with, dude. You know what? I, well, you know what I used to tell people my dream job was? To work in a hospital and to be able to say if you could take your child home or not after you pick the name. <laughs> and let me tell you, they would not have been at not left the hospital. It has to phonetically make sense and just not be stupid. It can be related. It can mean something. It can be in other languages. It has to phonetically make sense in one of the like 8,000 languages of the world. So... <laughs> So, Aaron, so basically, hey, man, this, is not, this name's not good enough. I like to direct you to my director of porn stars. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't even do that because that, that's you know at least for porn. Your little name will be Rose. Yeah. yeah. See, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron wants it to be where he's like, man, if I get my dream job, would be a job where I can have a magic moment every time I do my job. No, nope, it wouldn't be a magic. What you trying to name your kid? No. The Con La Vida. No. As soon as they say, I'm not gonna repeat the name. I'm gonna say, go back to the drawing board. Child not approved to go home yet. You cannot spell China with a Z. Exactly. <laughs> you cannot spell Suave with an F. <laughs> I had a kid named Suave in Oakland with an F. Shout out to Ed O'Bannon. Hey, if you want to sponsor our show. He can't sponsor it. He didn't get no money from that. Also, shout out to Dermot Fadden, who was on the cover of NCAA football that year, 2008. Oh, he was? Yeah. Hey, shout out to the Raiders. Shout out to the Raiders having some great first overall offensive draft picks in the last 20 years. Robert Gallery, 
for Gal- <laughs> yeah, Gallery, Darius Hayward Bay, and McFadden. McFadden could have been good, but injuries kind of took a toe. Anyways, and he, he also was, he also he also had the legs the size of a yeah, uh, chicken legs. he had the legs the size of a ball boy working in like one of the Negro leagues. Yeah, that probably was a clown in the off season. He had, a, he had them long distance runner legs. <laughs> that was not running back legs. <laughs> you mean the guys that run around the uh, A Stadium? And them long heads at the stadium during yeah. the got wearing one of the big hat, the fat hat, <laughs> the fat hat. Um, anyways, Brandon, give me a letter. Uh, let's let's do F. Just thinking about it. All right, fluffy flights. Fagua, Felicio, and Jen, James Franco. Come on, man. Franco. Fellatio Fagua. Froth, frippy frappy, flippy tappy, flambe. It was a fallacious flamingo. John Gruden's sitting here hugging people on the sideline. It's okay, you know, I'm just keep my hands in my pocket, nothing we can do. Got our ass whooped. I got a guarantee card. Because I'm going to get paid $100 million. That's why they can't afford to pay uh, your boy uh, Khalil Mack. Because they, they didn't have enough money to put it in escrow. Man, <laughs> they, uh, I mean, they were, there's a lot of talk this week about. Uh, about Khalil Mack winning MVP if he keeps this up. Like, if he gets enough sacks this year, he might be, like, the first NFL He wouldn't do it MVP. every day. Wait, did, did Lawrence Taylor won MVP, I thought, one year. I don't know about that. Yeah, Lawrence Taylor won MVP in 85. All right, here we go. Let's start the show. Yeah, let's start the show, man. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can find us on High Score 510 on the Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and our very own website, the dot com. Uh, be sure to hit us up. Uh, give us some questions. Any any things that are going on in your life you want to just you know have us chime in on. You need life advice. Holler at us because we give great life advice. Ain't that right? And we are the less here. it affects us, the better advice we get. <laughs> we are here with. Uh, this is Aaron Grayson, aka AG Three Triple Oak. Uh, come, I'm here right now coming at you like Bill Cosby standing over a sleeping Snow White. You ask kids why their beds aren't made, and they say, I forgot. You ask them why they're walking with muddy sneakers through the living room, they say, oh, I forgot. But these same kids will ask you, Dad, how come you didn't fix any Jell-O pudding tonight? You said you would two years ago, August 12th, at 7.31 p.m. You had red sweater on and some loafers brown. And you say, I forgot. And they say, Dad, you're grounded. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm sitting over standing there. That's Snow White. That's that Snow White there. Yeah, she she look like she sleep sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's such a terrible meme. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> worst meme ever, but great, greatest and worst meme ever. I had a great idea. I was like, man, hey, this is this is we making jokes, but that's what we gotta do. I make jokes about bad situations. That's you know, that's it what it is, nigga. I said it, it's my one nigga because oh, Brandon, we also try not to say nigga. But I was like, man. After I saw that Pedro sent that, our, our oh, resident friend friend Pedro sent that, um, and um, he sent a, the the meme of of Bill Cosby leaning over Snow White saying, "Oh, she sleep sleep," and I started just as a joke looking to see if they had any about him and the princess and the Pete. Couldn't find none though. Couldn't <laughs> find none. So that boy boy that. Sleeping Beauty is next, maybe. Princess in the Peak. She go to the doctor, Doctor Cosby. Be like, oh, I got some pills that'll help me. That. That. <laughs> the bitch could not sleep with a pee under the mattress. You know, I'm making. Go a, to Doctor Cosby. A, I'm making a new film of Inception, and I'm Bill Cosby gonna be the chemist in it. I'm gonna make an all black Inception movie. With Bill Cosby <laughs> as the chemist. Hey, Bill Cosby probably went to Samuel L. Jackson in Formula Fifty One and said, "Let me get your dirty drugs." Come on. <laughs> Bill Cosby as the chemist. I don't want the placebo. R-, R. Kelly's the one that watches over you while you're sleeping. To, 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 to wake you up supposedly Drake's the one that texts you to get your gum hang out in the first place no 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 Drake shows up in the dream like Jake shows up in the dream like like home dude's wife when you don't want him to show up <laughs> like, like wait wait I thought I thought she's not supposed to be here again you're not supposed to be here again that's the problem <laughs> just like Drake showing up wearing an uh, Irish flag mm-hmm. alright well go ahead pass it on to Brandon and we are also here with that's Brandon aka Taco Pablo just got done watching the Raiders play. Looking like they playing from Saratoga, Saratoga, Florida. Sarasota, Florida. Look like they already in Sarasota. Man, they ain't Margaritaville. Raiders. They ain't the LA Raiders. They are the Saratoga. Ready? Yeah, ready, man.
We need to get diapers, by the way. <laughs> you need diapers, by the way? We need to get diapers, by the way. <laughs> uh, the Rams kicker just missed the PAT there, down by one. Oh, shit. Uh, all right. Shout out to the greatest show on turf. The uh, Los Angeles Rams, Todd Gurley, Jeff Goff. Yeah, they on grass now. The greatest show on grass. Man. Uh, was it, I think it was last week. There was an article going around about the Rams trading away or letting Jeff Goff leave a free agency so their team could stay good. No, that's not gonna help. You still got a couple more years, right? I know. Right? I'm just uh, like before, like before when he's when he's due for a big contract, just like all right, cool way. Thanks for your time, Jeff. We're gonna draft somebody, get a young guy here, give him all these weapons, and we're gonna try to keep this train rolling. That shit ain't gonna work. You gotta keep Jeff. He's the key to those weapons. Who? Jeff Goff. Jeff. Jeff Fisher. You said who? I said it right. This man. <laughs> that nigga's name is like Jeff Goff. Jeff Fisher was the coach that drafted was him. Jared Goff, bro. Right? Man. <laughs> That's a big difference. His, his mama called him Cassius. I'm calling the boy Cassius. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, and my name is DJ Art with two T's for a double dose of that ting ting. The D is silent, so it's just junk. I think it's time for a poet. Doom comes like a vacuum because death sucks and smells like a raccoon or a baboon. Death kills us like crack kill Pookie. Like Schwarzenegger kill Tuki. Chewbacca was a Wookie. Revolution. What are we, what are we starting with, Brandon? What do, start with? Where do you think we started today? Well, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about today. But first, I actually want to talk about uh, Tristan Thompson. <laughs> it started with the NBA. NBA, NBA season is, Nuba. What, is uh, what, a week and a half away. It's coming up for open tonight. You got a fancy uh, It's a week NBA. away. From the, it's next two, It's not this Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's a week and two days away. A week and two days and Jared away. has not changed our fantasy draft to to a, to a online draft. My bad. According to according to the system, we gonna sit in some stupid ass room and then enter all things. <laughs> like like Jared, like Jared gonna actually take time to enter things in on his own. Anyway, anyway. Right. we t- we so we talking about uh, Tristan Thompson. If y'all don't know what happened, Tristan Thompson, Cleveland Cavaliers, the defending NF- uh, not NFC East but the uh, Eastern Conference champions, uh, sans LeBron James. They have basically uh, the the misfits of the Lakers on the team now, and they still have some holdovers with J.R. Smith. Uh, your boy Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson came out and said that as the way he sees it, they're the three-time defending M- uh, uh, Eastern Conference champions. So the title or the Eastern Conference champion, whoever we're going to represent, goes through them. So I don't know. Um, yeah, what, what do you think about that, uh, Brandon? Man, you know what? Like you know, I don't know if you guys ever watched that show Gangland on A and E back in the day. Yeah, you know, they, they talk about these big gangs, like this big gang leadership. I feel like the head like gang leader just got locked up, and everybody's still talking shit. Like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> like oh man, we still shit, and everybody's like, no, you know, actually, yeah. the guy we're really scared of is not here anymore. <laughs> so I think he's so. Like, they got to talk. You're right? right for you're right for a takeover. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's that's how I generally feel about it. I feel like the Cavs are gonna finish like maybe eighth in the East. I mean, they'll still probably do better than the Knicks, just because the Knicks find a way to lose every time. But, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I think Tristan Thompson's tripping, just like he was tripping when he was motorboating them chicks in that nightclub, just like uh, he was tripping was when he, he tripping? Well, he wasn't really tripping. I mean, he was tripping because he had a woman at home. He's tripping because he had a pregnant, yeah, yeah, yeah woman at tripping, home. You're tripping off of that. I, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like he was tripping. Like obviously, we kind of expected he's an NBA player, but he was tripping because he was doing that to think, bro, you are dating a Kardashian. You think people ain't gonna be watching you at all times? Uh, of that? Come on, bro. You not, not to mention the fact you six ten. Not six ten. <laughs> and then he, you ain't riding that Escalade because you six ten. You paid for a table at a club. It's one of those things where it's like, man, you riding this Escalade with your own driver, you probably, and you're 6'10". Right. Uh, and you say dumb shit like you did this week. You probably <laughs> ain't, you know what I'm saying? You probably playing the NBA. NBA. You got news on the Rockets? Anything on, anything on the Rockets? They're, uh, they're, they're still second best team. In the, in the in the West, man. But, uh, Soon to be third by, by, by February. Your boy Chris Paul defending uh, 
Carmelo Anthony this week, man, saying he gets a lot of hate for no reason. He's a great player. He's a Hall of Famer. Great teammate. Great teammate. He ain't never told told he ain't never told my wife that I was uh, cheating on her. Um, I'm just going over what makes you a great teammate in NBA. Uh, uh, you know what? He he put in on the part of weed when he's supposed to put in on it. Uh, he let us know when the person come to test him who's next on the list. Uh, he's good at finding somebody with clean pee. Um, he always knows the best buffets to go to. Uh, he knows the doctor that does house calls with penicillin. <laughs> he give me on set of any Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about Carmelo is, is you never hear anybody say how great his teammate is unless he's on their team. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got to say this. Like, no one that's past his teammate ever <laughs> said he's a great teammate. I don't right. know why Carmelo like, get that. Hey, I, like, hey, I, I ain't heard no one in New York, back. no one in Denver, no one in Oklahoma now say anything about him being a great teammate. Right. <laughs> Once he's gone. Once he, they always say it before the season starts. No, I don't know why. He's a great teammate. <laughs> he's best. Man, man. Offensive weapon, man. He's just a man. mentor to the young guys. Man, man. So he leaves, man. Just crickets. No, he made sure he paid. He paid for. He paid for that table. All the Team USA guys liked him. Well, of course, man. They was in another country. Man, just sleeping around. They all played six minutes. Six minutes. Six a game. minutes a game. They, <laughs> six minutes a game. Dude, that was easier than they than they than they normal off season. They like, hey, man, my normal off season, I'll be running more than this. Right. Get ready. I'm worried, but since I see this, since I see what LeBron's doing right now, and I'm seeing what that, what Chris Paul doing, I ain't got to run at all. Right. We playing six minutes and going out here running around on this banana boat. Hey, you know, y'all been on a banana boat? Hell no, nah, I ain't been on a banana boat. What you talking about me, man? You ain't gonna be jacuzzi and nobody up in here. <laughs> well, since last time I was here, the A's were in the playoffs, and now they're not. No, they're not. Oh, I call it the effect of Kamal. I was talking to Aaron this week. We want to do like a little uh, MLB playoff, but just the A's year in review. The A's. If you were to grade them a grade, what would you give them? If I'm grading on a curve, I'd give them an A. A curve? Who are you comparing the curve to? I'm, I'm comparing the curve to their expectations and what they're actually... Oh, they're, oh I thought you were comparing to other teams. No, the curve I was going to say, if you grade on the curve, then the Astros messed up the curve. Well, see... Now, the Astros, the, 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 the Red Sox, all of them messed up the curve. Yeah, no, no. If, if, I'm, no, if I'm grading on the curve of their expectations, if I'm grading just straight up, I give them like a B minus. C plus, typically. But I'll give them a B minus because they, because they exceeded my expectations to the point where they did make the playoffs. And they exceeded everybody. They exceeded everybody's expectations. They exceeded their own. You know, I had people who were optimistic. Our friend Tim, who was like, yeah, they're going to have a chance to win like 80 games this year. And I was like, yeah, right. First of all, Tim says that every, every year. year. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to every Tim. Year. Come on, our show. Every year. Um, but yeah, no, he was op- he's an optimist. He's somebody who really follows him he's closely, reads, reads everything. So he'll, he, he, he'll, he'll defend things that the A's do because he's, he's hoping that it'll work out. And this year, it worked out way more than typically, right? But uh, I'll just say this. The A's, C plus, B minus, uh, is my grade for them as just an organization. They're, they're like the Boston Celtics a couple years ago, where they, they were maxing out every different sh- strength that they had. They maxed it out, right? And they maxed it out in a way where they got... Well, they got Isaiah there. Thomas was there, right? Well, Isaiah yeah. Thomas was, was running the show, right? They, Two years ago, yeah. and they, made, they, won, they, they were number one seat. Yeah. They maxed out everything they were doing. The A's were just the bottom. They, they were the other boys in green. There's Shout no out to my Irish lads. The boys in green. These are the boys in green. But um, yeah, dude, like they were, they were the Celtics of baseball. There's this nothing year. higher they can do with the there's talent they have now. There's nothing better. And you get only baseball is crazy in the playoffs. That you can get hot. You can have certain batters get hot. You can have pitchers be hot, and you can just have that team chemistry, which they're able to find in the middle of the season, especially after the All Star break, and really like get that momentum going and win like. 10, 12 games in a row and they have streaks and that was cool to see. It's cool to see that um, but uh, and it's encouraging but overall I know that probably half those dudes aren't going to be on the team in two years so it's not that big a deal to me right now. I'm not. I'm, I'm waiting and seeing what the A's really do. Are they going to continue to do the beanball thing where you, you're not going to win because Billy Bean is hanging out with your boy Brian Cashman and be like, yeah, man, we homies, bro. Let's go have dinner and not watch the game because I'm too nervous because I know my team ain't going to beat yours because Brian Cashman is like, yeah, man, we friends. We save Matrix, guys. Thank you for all the intel. Now I'm going to take my 
200 million dollar budget and use the same strategy right. except get the players who do it at the <laughs> highest level I'm like yo bro guys right. like bro the worst thing that ever happened I'm like bro you should have wanted the attention Billy Bean you should have been like we're keeping all our shit on raps but he's such an egotistical fiend that he wanted people to know how tight and how smart he was look how smart I am watch I'm gonna change the game so everybody can funny thing is that he didn't really change yeah, it man. he just brought in someone that had the same revenge people would act like he changed the game and, and, and here's another crazy thing about Billy Bean uh, another crazy thing is how that stupid ass movie the, uh, what was it called uh, uh, Moneyball, Moneyball. Mm-hmm. how that stupid ass movie made it seem like the A's had no talent on the team they didn't even mention Miguel Tejada name they had a black dude playing shortstop but didn't say who he was <laughs> Miguel Tejada won the MVP that year yeah they, they, all, they kept focus they kept focus on the weakest player on the team which was Scott Hatterberg Scott Hatterberg my boy Scott Hatterberg who was he weak. was so good he reminded me he's like he was like a uh a, a, <laughs> Uh, I don't even know who's a uh, Stephen Vogt. Sorry about that. Yeah, he's, he's a Stephen Vogt. He, no, Stephen Vogt first. The next. sad part, Stephen Vogt was better than Scott Hatterberg. Yeah, but Scott Hatterberg was able to do it for a couple extra years because because well, he got the juice to do it like a couple extra years. I think I'm still an Ace fan. I watched the game. I watched the playoff game. They got scraped. Tim will tell me you're not an Ace fan. Tim will tell me I'm not an Ace fan because I don't drop. Hey, hey, I don't gotta be. If I'm gonna be a, a, a good American, I'm gonna be a patriot. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna speak out when something's wrong, right? Speak out to the wrongs of my people. That's not a good See American. That's not a good American. No, no, no. That's being a patriot. It's, 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 that's, it's, not it's, according, that's not according to Donald Trump. Oh, it's vocal dissent. You know what I'm saying? That's what Donald Trump does on Twitter every day. He has no, vocal no, dissent this is from a powerful cool. position. But he's also not not necessarily the smartest motherfucker on the planet. Not the most diplomatic, not the well most tactful either. And that's the issue. But anyways, <laughs> we're not going to get into that. Right, you're an uh, fan. Jared's so. politics getting into that. <laughs> That's how you possible. But yeah, no, no. A's, to be to be a real sports fan, you don't have to be somebody who just supports everything that your team does blindly. Right. And that's 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 part of the the evolution of being a sports fan. It's like if I'm gonna spend my time watching you and spending thus giving you money, like I want a good product and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be critical if I don't feel like you are doing that. And I'm not saying I have all the information. No fan has all the information that the GMs do, sure. but there's a lot of dumb GMs that get fired on a regular basis. <laughs> Damage On Jared's point, Jared only thinks about that when it comes to sports. Kanye West is a whole different thing. Like whatever Kanye does is just like gospel. Damn it! Yeah. Shout, shout out to Kanye, by the way. Shout out, shout out to Kanye. <laughs> Keep making America great again and making rap horrible. Hey, hey, that's what you're doing good right now. Hey, shout out to Kanye West. Hey man, I believe in you. I believe in you, brother. I know you can make it back. I know you can do good things for this country and this world. Um, but you need to get your head out of your proverbial ass. Kanye West sometimes makes me believe uh, he ruins my faith in God. Because I always say to myself, if God really exists, then Kanye would have been on that operating room table dying and not his mama. I would have thought. <laughs> I would have thought that that it wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> With all the church that you and Pedro been to, I would think nobody could shake your convictions. It, it can't, but he do it sometimes. Because I was like, man. Uh, or you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't make me not believe in God. I just believe that maybe God doesn't do everything, have all the answers. Because the fact that, uh, you know, like I said, like Kanye, the fact that he could have all this money and be so ignorant, or maybe just God ain't figured out. I like I said before. I think Kanye is just in a. He's in a perverted world with the Kardashian. He was already there. He was getting there. No, I'm not saying he, he wasn't getting there, but I think that it's been magnified. Obviously, being in that situation and. He has so much money and so much support. No matter so you're saying, he if, he not if you were Card, uh, Kanye, but if one of the Kardashian sisters all of a sudden took an interest in you, you wouldn't be jumping on it? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that in my whole my whole world perspective. I know. Speed. I'm just wondering, would you though? That's the second Oh, thing. it depends. I might I might say no. Does I think it depend I, on I, the I sister or it depends on... I don't know. My standards are pretty... Like, you know, I'd probably be like, hey, you know, girl, you want to hang out and just, you know, kick it for a little bit, you know? You might be homegirl status. <laughs> That's how you know how I like to do Aaron. She she might be homegirl status, but probably not. <laughs> Knowing the baggage, now nah, I'm good. I mean, their baggage is. I mean, see, baggage. I don't, at least you have the. At least you at know what their baggage, baggage is. Baggage, right? Yeah, at least you know. No, everyone has baggage. It's, it's for unless they're like 20 years old and hasn't really lived life yet. They everyone has baggage, right? Mm-hmm. No one. Has, you, you you start gaining baggage around 20 years old. Some people gain it before that. At least with them, you know what their baggage is, right? Right. Yeah. That's not a good thing, Jared? No. Still baggage. Everybody has baggage, though. Everybody. I know baggage, everybody has baggage, but the baggage they got is not baggage I'm trying to unpack. <laughs> Come on. 
That's that's the thing. If you got if you got, I, I don't mind certain baggage, but there's certain people I would. I, I'm, I'm trying to unpack it. Heard about this baggage, man. Look, <laughs> look, 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 look. A couple of them Kardashians gave me a shot at it. I'll be right there. But difference is, I wouldn't be trying to wipe them up. I'll be acting like I'm trying to wipe them up. That's what I said. They might. I'm gonna be in there lying. I'm gonna be in there lying. You know, I'm in love. Listen <laughs> that. <laughs> Hold me on that screen. Anyways, uh, are we gonna get back to us tracking in? Oh yeah, so Brandon, what was your credit for the A? Aaron, Aaron over here taking us off the Richter scales. You don't want to bring up Kanye. I didn't bring up Kanye. Nigga, you just want to start asking about booty. Then Aaron start opening up a new window on his computer and starts talking about having sex with Kardashians. Yeah, man. Nah, man. <laughs> that phone, that phone ain't working right now. That's why I'm just watching the Rams game. <laughs>